few days after I had recorded the previous episode, Ember 1.0 came out. It's time to celebrate and update our application to this version. So as previously, I downloaded the latest starter kit from the Ember.js site and updated the Ember.js lib itself in my application. Since our application is tiny, I expect it to still work without any changes to the code. I reload the page. The songs are still listed correctly. And if I add that extra song, it gets inserted to the right place. The first step before moving on is to dress up our application. We will use Bootstrap 3 that you can get at getbootstrap.com. I've downloaded the assets and copied them to my project. I then went ahead and made some design comps for the next phase of the application. What I want to achieve in this episode is to has, have a list of all artists on the left and all the songs belonging to the selected artist on the right. When I click on one of the artists, I want to see the songs from that artist. When no artist is selected, I want to see an empty message on the right. If an artist is selected, but it doesn't have any songs yet, again, I want to see an explanatory message about why there is no content on the right. This frequent user interface is called a master detail view in UX design and Ember.js has outstanding support for that, as we will see. Before delving into building the next phase of our application, let's talk a bit about routing. As a user interacts with the web application, the app goes through a series of states. We are used to see these state changes being reflected in the URL on the server side. However, the picture is not that clear in the case of client-side apps. The URL might not always change due to user interaction and thus it becomes difficult to refer to different client-side states. In Ember.js, the router is a principal component that manages these state transitions. You will often hear the members of the core team talk about how important it is to use routes and think about your application in terms of those. This has two advantages. First, you have a concept according to which you can design your application. Second, the different states of your application become shareable. Let's see how that works in practice. So now that my design comp is complete, I just copied over its content to my main template here. And on the right, in my application code, I created a new class, app.artist, and I created a few artists here. And I also added a couple of songs so that more than one artist uh, have songs. So in my template, the only thing that I changed from the comp is that I use a loop with each helper that we already know to display the name of each artist. So if I now go and load my web application, then I can see that my page is identical to the design comp. So this works, but it's not the way to build web applications. For starters, we don't want to keep all the markup of our application in one huge template and use uh, quasi-global variable names in it. Fortunately, routes come to the rescue. So I broke up the application template into two parts. I left content that is the same on all pages in the application template and I placed one outlet block here. This slot will be populated by another template which depends on the current URL. The part that I took out, I put it into this artists template. It's exactly the same. So now if I refresh the page, look like this. 
You see that only the header remains. Why is that? Well, because that outlet is going to be filled in by another active route, it has remained empty because there is no other route that got entered. So I have to define one. The way to define routes in Ember.js is to say app.router.map Press it a function and define all the routes here in this function. So I say this route artists. I'm giving it a path. And I also have to define the route itself. So by convention, if a route is called artists, then the name of that route is going to be artists route. And it's a descendant of ember.route. So in this route, I define a so-called model hook. And I return all artists. So each template is backed by a model. And this way, I'm telling Ember.js what this model should be. So when the artist route is active, the artist template is going to be backed by app.artists. So now, on this route, I still don't have any content, but if I go to the route that I've just defined, it loads my content correctly. A few comments before we continue. First, there is a route that gets activated at the root of our application, and that is called index route. So to verify that, I created an index template which corresponds to the index route with this content. So now if we go and reload the root of our application, it displays the content that I've just showed you. Second is that by convention, all routes render the template with the same name as the route. So for example, in our case, the artist's route here renders the artist's template here. So these two names have to match. And the third and final comment is that if the path of a route is the same as its name, then there is no need to define it. So if I just remove this whole thing and reload the artist's route, it works as before. In this episode, we first designed the basic layout of our application. We decided to implement a master detail interface between artists and songs. With regard to the Ember.js application, we extracted the part that changes between screens of our application and put it into a separate template. We set up a route to render that template into the application template. We saw how routes and templates play together and how this can be used to design an application and break it up into coherent parts. We will learn more about routing in the next episode.